So now we're going to transmit our buffer that we've just created in the uh, memory out through the USB peripheral to our PC. So we go back to the pin diagram now. So we have to assign the uh, USB peripheral. If you scroll right to the bottom of the uh, periphery, you will find USB OTG FS. So it's the full speed peripheral we're going to use. And you want it to be device only, please. Then we need to scroll all the way to the top of our left hand side of the screen where you'll find the middleware. And we now need to configure the libraries for the full speed to be communication device class, CDC. So it's under the USB device. Yep, the other one should be grayed out, hopefully. Host should be grayed out because you've only assigned device. <laughs> so once we've configured the USB, we now need to check to make sure our clock source is correct for USB. So if you go back to your clock configuration tab, if you find USB here, it's probably set at a very strange frequency, not 48 megahertz. Right. Go back to your main clock, right click on that, and tell it to lock that frequency in place. Right click on the H clock that you typed 192 megahertz in hopefully earlier, and lock it. Then you go down to where your USB is, type in 48 and hit enter. And it will change the PLLs only for that part of the path so that you get your 48 megahertz for your USB. It might take a while to think about it. So we've all now got 48 megahertz for our USB. So we're gonna go and configure the USB peripheral. So you'll now see that we've got two, S two USB blocks, one in middlewares and one in the connectivity column. So if we go into configuration tab now, we're now going to configure the USB peripheral. We're not touching the libraries, just the peripheral. And what we need to do is disable VBUS sensing. This is only because it's not available on the discovery board. No other reason we're disabling it, it's just not a feature that's on this board. So, so we have to disable it for the discovery kit. So that's everything we need to do for the hardware. So we now need to go into project, menu project, project settings. You need to give your project a name. You need to give your project a location. And you need to make sure that eWarm is your output toolchain. So you need a name, a location, and a toolchain are the three elements you need to fill in in this box. And select OK when you've finished. So once you've completed that, you then go to Menu, Project, Generate Code. So once you've filled all those details in, you generate the code. You should then get three options when it's compiled the code. One of them says open project. I think it's the middle button. If you click on that, it'll then launch IAR for you automatically with your new project that you've just created.